Welcome to the Expectant Knitter Podcast. I'm your host, Steph. Um, this is our first episode. Does that mean pan ultimate? For, mm, whatever comes first. Anyways, I'd like to insert something clever here to be witty and charming, but whatever. This is me and this is how it's going to be. So, um, first to tell you a little bit about my expectations for the video podcast is that I am a knitter. I've been knitting for uh, going on eight years now, and recently um, I've become pregnant. <laughs> and so I thought it would be interesting to talk about knitting and pregnancy and how they go together. Not that I am anywhere near an expert, first time doing this, <laughs> but I um, thought it might be a fun topic to talk about. So I'm for sure going to try and make this a weekly video cast. And no promises beyond these nine months. I know that my life is going to change dramatically once our little bundle of joy arrives. So just to set the expectation so you know when and how you're, often you're going to see me. So like I said, knitting for a while now. I am married. Um, my husband, I call him the boyfriend. That's, he was the boyfriend for eight years before we got married. He's still the boyfriend, even though we've been married for three years? A while. <laughs> um, so, just so you'll know, when I talk about the boyfriend, I really mean my husband, but that's what he goes by. We also have three cats, and I'm sure they will make their way into the podcast, but um, I thought I'd show you a picture. Can you see that? See, three cats. So the little white one is our little female, is it? And then there's Mac and Linus. Those are the two boys. Um, <clears throat> so when you see them, I'll t I'm sure I'll have funny stories and interesting things to say about them, but I can't really wrangle them all up to show you right now. Uh, so <laughs> I guess we will launch straight into the knitting. So what's on my needles right now? Uh, the first thing I'm working on are the uh, BFF socks by Cookie A. They've been around for a while. I just recently got her latest book, Knit Sock Love, and um, was looking at it and thought, why have I made these? They're nice, simple. It's a cable mixed in with some ribbing. And this is uh, my favorite yarn, favorite workhorse sock yarn, Regia Stretch, in the color 00121. Very creative on their part. I love red you're going to notice the theme. So, red socks. So that's the first one. I'm just past the heel doing, um, I always substitute in Wendy Johnson's short row, no, not short row, Wendy Johnson's um, heel flap, toe up heel flap. So when I say I'm knitting a pattern that's by such and such a designer, if it's a cuff down design, oh, bless you Linus, I'm always going to go toe up and use the basic architecture of Wendy's socks because that's what I do, that's what I like, that's what fits me. It's perfect. So these, I'm working on these bad boys right now. It's going really fast. I'm surprised for being a ribbing pattern back and forth, back and forth. But maybe that's because my expectations of how long um, some things should take have been extended. So they, I belong to a local knitting group and they decided to have a knit along, a shawl knit along. <clears throat> so wanting to belong, I jumped right in. I have to tell you, I am not a lace knitter. I do not like shawls. I'm really not a fan of charts. I have done... <laughs> Mac is walking around behind the camera. Oh, and there's a zit. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I'm not a fan of the of lace knitting. But I'll take a challenge, and the last one I did was in November. It was a Christmas present for my mom. I did Wendy's, Wendy Johnson Seaside Chalette. Seaside Chalette? Anyways, it came out beautifully. I do a great job. I don't know what my problem is. I just get bogged down in the length of the repeats and reading charts. And it's not simple sock knitting, like I like. So, here, this is my Harumi. Harumi? Um, by Emily, I'm not sure what her last, Emily Rose maybe? Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry, which um, if you're on Ravelry, you can find me over there as Knitting Samurai. I'd be happy to have some more friends. <laughs> uh, so this is mine. Is it? Sorry. Is it? Say hello, is it? Right. Um, this is mine. I am using the, here, let me show you, String Theory, which is a, a semi-local 
yarn dyer string theories. Um, it's a merino bamboo bamboo blend, 65 superwash, 35 merino, in the color ruby slippers. So it's um, 500 yards to the to the skein, and the pattern calls for. Can you see it? I guess this is the more interesting part down here. Anyways, pattern calls for 460 yards, so I should be good. Um, I've finished all of chart A, I'm on to chart B, I have like 10 rows to go and each row, whether it's knitting or purling, takes about 35 minutes. And I tried to set myself a goal of knitting 4 rows a day, but that's just not working because there are nights when I get home and I am so tired that all I want to do is lay, and lay down on the couch, my little love seat, and watch TV till my eyes cross, which is usually about 8.30. So. Um, wasn't before, but it is now, and I'm a fame, uh, not fame, I'm not a famous knitter, but I'm famous amongst my friends, infamous if you will, for always having yarn knitting in my hands, and so it's really odd that I'm just too wiped out to knit. I've never even heard of that. That's, that's crazy talk. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, Let's keep going on to expecting. Expectations? Something. It'll be something cute once I get that nailed down. So I'm eight weeks pregnant and this week I've gotten some interesting food aversions. So I've had the typical nausea and exhaustion. It's to be expected, right? But um, this week, I've <laughs> on top of coffee's been turning my stomach last couple weeks, which for a four to five cup of coffee a day girl, weaning off it, to get pregnant and then deciding that, oh my God, I can't even stomach this stuff has been quite an interesting adventure. So coffee, one of my favorite foods, off. The other two things that I'm almost completely off are like my desert island food, you know, oh, you can only eat one thing. The boyfriend and I once had a contest to see who could eat pizza longer. We both proclaimed ourselves to be the bigger pizza lover. We went like two weeks eating pizza every single day because there's a lot of variety in pizza. You can, you know, different kinds when you think about like Pizza Hut pizza or frozen pizza or nice brick oven pizza, toppings, the cheeses. Oh, so good for vegetarians, by the way. Um, so I am absolutely diehard for pizza. Could eat it every day. I was actually the one who caved. He won. His taste buds are more bland than mine. And the phone. Hi. So speaking of the boyfriend and his pizza ways, that was him calling to say he'd be back late. Um, so yeah, pizza. I would eat pizza all the time, every day. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so since I've been pregnant, last two times I've had pizza, let me point at you. That's how important this is. I have to point at you about it. Last two times I've had pizza, super ultra nauseous. Not cool. Not cool at all stomach. Cut that out. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I have been eating a lot more pasta. Doctor says it's fine. Go heavy on the carbs now and then focus on the salad and the good stuff. In a few more weeks when I'm less rumbly in my tumbly. Um, yeah, so pizza, coffee, and then chocolate. Can you believe it? Every time. Every time I've eaten it, I get sick. I'm not eating it anymore. I'm done. Okay, fool me once, shame on me. Twice, you something. Like five times, it's time to stop, so... No more chocolate for this girl, at least for a couple weeks, and then maybe I'll try again. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, what's happening with the food. What else can we talk about? Oh, new yarn. Okay, so I'm not a crazy yarn buyer. Okay, I have a lot of yarn, but I try not to buy as much anymore. But this past week, I happened to buy some. So then I share. All right, so... A couple of the girls and I took a day trip up to, um, I don't know, Seacoast, Maine, and we went to visit Pearl Diva. Love that shop. If I could have a yarn shop, that would be my shop. It's so nice. So nice in there. It's one of those shops at the house, and every room has a different weight of yarn, except it's really open and sunny and bright and comfy and cozy, and there are more samples hanging in that shop than five yarn shops combined. So you get lots of inspiration, lots of books. Great job. Anyways, um, while I was there, I picked up some of the String Theory caper sock. In case you can't tell, I like String Theory a lot. The bamboo stuff, it's okay. It's bamboo. But this stuff, the caper sock, is amazing. It's 10% um, cashmere, 80% sock. 
a sock fight, cat fight, 80% superwash and 10% nylon. So it's a good sock yarn. I would consider it more of almost a heavy fingering, almost a sport, but it's so soft and so squishy. And look at this color. How do you not love this color? It's called Mars. I've already knit a pair of socks out of it. I'm not going to lie. I still bought it again. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Doesn't really go with my pink though, huh? And so the other yarn I got while I was there was um, same same base, the caper sock again. And this color is Labradite. It's more of a teal blue with bits of, of green in it. It's very pretty. It's not red, but it's nice. Very squishy, very lovely. So that's my new yarn. Um, what else is new? So I've been knitting lots of baby stuff, which I'm not going to haul it all out on a parade, but my next project I intend to do will be um, an 18-month-old baby sweater. I knit my first baby surprise. Sorry, is it Troublemaker? She's the youngest. She gets into a lot of mischief. Um, I knit my first baby surprise for this expectation here. And was I've knit a few of them before. I guess I forgot how small they are. It's, it's wee tiny, super tiny. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that's six month size. I'm not going to knit too many six month size. And I am excited and I am a knitter. So I think I will try to knit like three sweaters at each six month period. So I'll be well stocked up because I hear that <laughs> once you have a baby, you might not have so much knitting time. I don't know. That's the word on the street. So I'm trying to bulk up on my socks. I've got a bin in the garage with probably 10 pairs of head because my sock drawer upstairs is full. Uh, so if I can't knit socks, I'll still have nice new socks waiting for me. And same thing with the baby sweaters. Get a bunch done when I'm prepped ahead of time. So that's my plan. Um, I, uh, sorry, not prepared. Don't know the name of the next sweater I'm going to knit. But it's going to be super wash. I do know that. So that's on the horizon. The um, <clears throat> other thing, check out this hair. Yeah, it, I'm, uh, this is the shortest my hair has ever been. And um, one of the first things my mom said to me when I told her we were expecting was, oh, Stephanie, what are you gonna do with your hair? Are you gonna change it? Cause this is about 20 minutes in the morning up to the end of the day. So it's all flattened out and not cool and flippy and in your face. I'm sure someday you'll see it like that. Um, but she asked what I was going to do. So I'm probably going to grow my hair out too. So, cause let's go back to a ponytail. Keep it simple, right? Simple, stupid. So that's it. Just more expectations setting you up. Expectations. That's like the key word for this week or something. Uh, <laughs> and there you have it. That is my inaugural episode um, of the Expectant Knitter. I hope to see you back here next week and the week after. Website stuff, Ravelry, all that's, I'll figure it out as I go. But for now, thanks for listening.